Cat is Maxwell's here. Finally found one of these drills. This is actually the DW2 22 3 8 inch carpenter's drill. Carpenter's drills are just higher power 3 8 drills. Milwaukee, uh, their famous one, which also happens to be a 222, a 0222-1 oh, on the Milwaukee. Is there a version 3.5 amps with 1,000 RPM? Porter Cable has one that was 1,200 RPM with a 4.5 amp motor. But I've always kind of wanted the DeWalt. This is a slightly cheaper model. Milwaukee also had a cheaper model, which was the 0221, um, where the DeWalt, their DW221 was actually the better one, which had a metal front gear case. That is the only difference between the DW221 and the 222. I think everything else is the same. This still has a metal diaphragm, all ball needle bearing construction. Just a slightly more expensive, I think it was five or ten bucks more. Version had a metal front end, although this is still pretty heavy duty and I'm more than satisfied with it. Except for, this comes with like the world's cheap, this is a Jacobs USA Chuck, but this is just a terribly loose one. And even if we really torque it. This was in the era where DeWalt included these side buttons, which DeWalt has since then eliminated. There is a part that I'm going to end up ordering. I think that's just a, a blank that fits in there. Because of course, the worst part about this button, and the reason DeWalt eliminated it, is what this is. This is a lock, you know, just like on angle grinders. Uh, it locks into the gear but in this case this is actually a tooth that jams into the motor arbor itself so if you're running this drill and you are holding it like this and you kind of forget or you're doing some heavy duty work and you press that in it's going to end up grinding the spindle on the motor the most expensive part in the gearbox that you could damage uh, and it was really unfortunate and DeWalt just stopped doing that because they just had too many warranty claims over that at least I believe they have, because I have, you know, some DW235Gs, and you'll recognize this body shape. This is like their universal body shape, the most infamous being the DW235G, the half-inch drill that's been sold at, like, Home Depot for more than 20 years. What made me particularly stoked about this one is I recognize it is that it doesn't have holes. Or I should say round holes. When these, the, this is an old American-made one. We can tell by the serial number there that that is a 2001 of course, it doesn't say made in Mexico. The Mexican one made ones, really, in my opinion, are just fine. But it is cool to find an old American made one. There's slots. And so on everything, once they started uh, going out of country manufacturing, this vent ended up having holes like this. The reason that this one I was so stoked about it is not all, is that it's a 6.7 amp at 1200 RPM, which makes it an extremely stout 3H drill. As a matter of fact, one of the stoutest of the 1200 RPM 3 8 inch drills that you can get. And that's what really stoked me out, and I've always kind of wanted one of these to walk. It's just the fact that it is, uh, it's as powerful as older half inch drills, to, to really put it simply. It is just an extremely stout. Like I said, Porter Cable's version was pretty uh, stout. 4.5 amps at 1200 RPM, but this is 2.2 amps over that. This was just a really 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 stout 3 8 drill that was built essentially using the hardware from their half inch drills i uh due to the dimensions you know this is this does not have the extended gearbox you know it doesn't have a pr pr provision to put on a auxiliary handle but i'm pretty sure you could take a dw235g pull this gearbox off and put it on there and even upgrade it to a 7.8 amp or i think they're even up to 8.5 what i thought find interesting <laughs> is that they use slots on the older of these, you know, the ones that are based on the half-inch drill body, and then the newer ones, they went to holes, where, oddly enough, they were holes on these 2,500 RPM drills, which were also really, or also sold at Home Depot, and then on the newest versions of the 2,500s, they went to slots, so it's kind of back and forth with them. The reason that these are so common and the half-inch drill ones are so common is because they were the ones sold at retail. And for some reason, you know, it seems that these 3 8 inch carpenter's drills, these high-torque, 1,200 RPM, 1,000 or 1,200 RPM, um, high-power 3 8 drills just was determined a long time ago, 20 years ago or more, that 
Uh, they just weren't necessary. So places like Home Depot never actually stocked these. So that's why they're so hard to find is they were all kind of special order items. Maybe certain construction supplies would have them. But to tell you the truth, I have only ever seen like one of these before in the wild. I have seen, you know, these kind of DeWalt drills. I mean, they're a dime a dozen. They're sold at Home Depot. So people buy them, use them for a project for a few years, and then end up donating them. I mean, I, I've probably seen 50 of these style of drills. I've seen a few dozen of the DW235G. I mean, I own like two or three of them. But man, these 1200 RPM, 6.7 amp, 3 8 versions, the DW221 and the DW222, almost never. This is the only one I've seen 20 years of tool collecting that uh, has been worthy. And it kind of explains why they're a bit overpriced on eBay, in my opinion. But it is awesome. I mean, if you're somebody who kind of likes quarter drills and 3 8 drills that have a you know good balance between RPM and torque, it's hard to beat these. It's just a really, really stout. Except for this 3 8 truck. I mean, I've really torqued this down. We'll press in the button and lock this down as tight as I can. And then this truck was just a nightmare. This is absolutely one of the worst trucks to ever bear. <laughs> a Jacobs USA name. I don't have a much better replacement. These do have a half inch spindle, I believe. Uh, I'm pretty sure they do. And so I have this half inch chuck, which will, you know, look normal on it. This is the best thing I have in my collection of tools. At least it'll, it does ratchet and it has a, just a full length collar. So it'll be easier to get a better grip and get a tighter grip. Because this Jacobs chuck is just not up to the par for the, quite frankly, the build quality of the rest of the tool. And really like the ergonomics on these. I think these DeWalt's really have excellent ergonomics. Nice curved two-finger trigger and really, really linear trigger. I mean, check this out. Just super linear, just really fine control. Really do like the triggers. So anyway, I'm going to swap chucks and we'll just take a quick look inside. Sometimes the chucks can be a bear to remove. This one just came right off. It is indeed a half inch spindle, which is really nice. It's a nice thicker spindle. Um, more heavy duty. They use a snap ring all, all their half inch drills to capture this bearing, but oddly enough, they use three screws and it may be it may be a snap ring on the ones that have the aluminum gearbox or on this plastic one they may have felt that there was too much stress on the plastic so instead they oddly enough they use three screws to capture that bearing I thought that was kind of interesting all right let's see if I uh, did right here I actually have a DeWalt one inch ship's auger with a 3 8 inch actually now this has a half inch truck so I could put any number of uh, different bits in here but this one inch auger is uh, what I had convenient at this moment. Make sure that I actually see a lot of these half inch trucks. They have like these little double little V grooves in the jaws to get extra grip. But sometimes they'll, they'll end up gripping on the corners. You want to make sure that you're actually on the flats here. Well, you would use the lock. <clears throat> Ratcheting chucks are much better. I wonder if that wobbles this bit or the chuck. My auger is a little bent. I have this. This is one of these classic Miller's Falls. Um, this happens to be a triple eight. These are like these ultra super duty. Uh, spade bits that use high-speed steel tips. Some of the nicest spade bits as far as materials I've ever seen is these uh, these heavy-duty Miller's Falls. They just have, this is like a half-inch shank on a one and eighth inch spade bit. It's just unbelievable. Anyway, the truck does run true. Turns out I have a slightly bent, uh, which is fine. It was like a dollar uh, inch auger. 
anyway, this is kind of like the point of these. As many times as the inch auger through, you know, thick wood, this is a 4x8. Or 4x6, I forget. It's a 4x8. You would use a half inch drill for this, but that was kind of the point and one of the reasons I really wanted one of these Waltz is they're just super powerful 3 8 drills. You just want to make sure to brace yourself. These are a wrist twister 3 8 inch drill. Come on. And you'll want to be careful when you're doing that, but as you can see, this can just rip through um, one inch holes. Bogs down some, but really, I mean, it takes a pretty stout. Some of the modern cordless drills can, I think, can do it at 1200 RPM. I'm not super positive. We'll do one more hole here. Once again, one inch auger through very dry uh, four by eight pine. That's productivity right there. You all have me curious. This is a DCD 996. I know it's not the latest and greatest, but still uh, mighty stout cordless drill. And uh, plenty of charge in the battery. Second gear on this is 1300 RPM, so real close to that DW222. So let's see how well it does with the one same bit, same material. It is a pretty stout cordless drill. I'm surprised it does it so easily. So this no has no problem either. And let's just do another comparison since we just did those three holes with the DW996. Let's go back to this again. Same bit, same material, just like before. Twenty years ago, in two thousand one, when this was made. That performance would have been basically unbelievable. I mean, this really was one of the most powerful quartered 3 8 drills on the market. But man, those brushless, especially second, third generation brushless cordless drills, man, they've come a long way, to tell you the truth. That DW996 on uh, second gear, I think outperformed this, and this thing has a 6.7 amp motor. That would be nominally 800 watts of power. I mean, that's one horsepower. Supposedly has a one horsepower motor on it. And to tell you the truth, I think it was getting bested by, I think it's just getting bested with the, by that uh, cordless drill. Still pretty awesome in my opinion. Take a little, little look at the back and the front. This is the same design that DeWalt has used now for a long time. 25 years, I think. Same brushes. You know, you can still, of course, get brushes for this. I can tell by the body that this was going to be in great condition. We can see that here. Just the brushes have hardly anywhere on them at all. Brass guides clock spring with the finger to handle the low profile super simple cord pinch they do and that's actually still pretty cool compared to the motor little copper plate for the like thyristor the little variable speed circuit and the trigger 
just uh, give it a little bit of extra cooling. If we take a close look, that appears to be a 10 amp, 125 volt rated trigger on a 6.7 amp tool. Uh, that's about a 50%, 45% overrating. So nicely overrated trigger. Not a lot else uh, going on in the back of this tool. You can see they just use a clamp type cord pinch, although oddly enough, you can see there's a convolution here to also run the cord through. Um, but apparently they just didn't bother to use that. Taking a look at the gearbox. Get that all apart. We can see that they use plenty of grease. It's gray, so that's gonna be a molybdenum disulfide impregnated grease. Pretty nice grease. We can see it, it is an aluminum diaphragm. It's really just this housing that's uh, nylon. We can see these bosses here, protrusions. They sit in these holes here and here. There's a gasket to reduce oil leaking out. And those bosses just maintain how, when you take it apart and reassemble it, make sure that the diaphragm stays absolutely in the same alignment as when you originally took it apart. That prevents the gears from getting off kilter. There's a lot of drills where they don't do that. So when you put on the gearbox, you can shift it around a little bit. That causes the gears to wobble back and forth, causing them to wear out early. It is all helical cut gears, double reduction. And of course, one of the things that DeWalt does is on helical cut gears, they're slanted. So there's a slight screw action where it's causing the gears to want to slide back and forth, additional thrust loads. And DeWalt's one of the only ones that does this where they use a radial needle bearing uh, to deal with those thrust loads. And mm, nice and greasy here. Pull that out. And just wanted to show here. Oh, I gotta get a better angle with the light. There you go. Can just see in there, those are indeed needle bearings there for the axial loads. And if I can get this washer kind of back into place here, you'll be able to see down there that that is also a little needle bearing. So still all ball needle bearing with radial needle thrust bearings. You can see how this gear lock mechanism, it just jams a tooth right into the motor armor. So that's uh, just end up being kind of an ill-fated design. You just have to be really aware of it when you're, if you have one of these DeWalt. You can see that this is an insert, so you can get plastic blanks. You can order plastic blanks to replace this, and eventually I'll do that and put on a keyed chuck, I think. I'll add just a touch of extra grease in here. Otherwise, that's the uh, teardown. So anyway, that's my review of the DW222, and almost exactly the same as its aluminum gear case cousin, the DW221. Obviously, compared to modern brushless cordless drills its power is not as impressive as it was but this came out in 2001 22 years ago this thing would have spanked cordless drills and it's still valid today still a nice powerful 3 8 inch even though i put a half inch chuck on there still a nice well-built half inch spindle 1200 rpm 6.7 amp 3 8 inch carpenter's drill and in the market, this was actually very competitive. It was one of the most powerful of these mid-speed 3.8 inch drills. It's just a shame that they weren't stocked at places like Home Depot and stuff. They would have been a, a lot more common, but they just never were. And so these were custom-ordered drills, and they just don't turn up very often. Not at all. Milwaukee and Porter Cable sold more of their drills uh, the mid-speed Carpenter's 3 8 drills and DeWalt ever did just because and it just seemed puzzling they should have pushed it more why make a tool that you're hardly gonna sell when it's actually a nice competitive product and it's pretty cool to be able to show you guys the uh, one of the old American made ones really appreciate everybody's been watching see you next time